Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tomorrow's uh, St. Jude Classic. It's a, I don't say unique, it's just a different type of slate in that there's number one, only 70 golfers, and number two, and it's no cut. Um, so usually these types of slates lend themselves to Stars and Scrubs uh, builds. The reason for that is that Part of the risk of playing these top, you know, top priced golfers is that if they miss the cut, you're completely dead. But in a no cut event, these high priced golfers always had a chance to exude their skill over the course of four straight days. So usually that's what ends up happening um, is that stars and scrubs turns out to be the preferred build. But as we you know, live in a world of ownership and trying to do things that not everybody else is doing, I kind of like to play kind of middling builds uh, in these types of events to get a little bit different. And I hope that the projections and the Saberson runs uh, kind of support that. Um, so what we're going to do is the same thing we do for the other sports when I do the solo, is I'm not going to go through tier by tier or golfer by golfer, but I'm just going to take an overall just total slate view um, and then see who looks good and then we're going to do some hand build lineups, and then we're going to do some uh, couple of saber ones. So let me, well, let's just. Uh, this is the DraftKings slate, the salaries or whatever you see from you know from Scotty Scheffler at twelve one all the way down to these other guys down at six k. Um, but let me pull up my sheets, and it's the process is exactly the same uh, for this sport as opposed to others. So I'm rating all these guys by sheets value score. Now, again, I could do it by fantasy points um, or I could do it by points per dollar or I could do it by sheets value score. And like most sports, I like to start by rating them by sheets value score. Now, one thing that you might notice if you followed me and my analyses in the past is that in your traditional cut events, the top rated guys are actually going to be uh, the, the highest price guys. They usually have the highest sheets value score, um, um, probably because the the lower price guys like have a better chance to make the cut, right? In, in a no cut event, uh, and and a lot of the negativity around these the negative projections around the seven K guys um, is because they might not make the cut all that often. So that's why you'll see that from a points per dollar perspective. Um, as well as a sheets value score perspective, the, the the guys that you'll see near the top are usually kind of lower priced. Now, however, that doesn't mean that the builds are necessarily going to end up with all these guys. Um, oftentimes, you'll see builds, even though these 11K guys right down here, with them just, you know, because of their raw points, kind of dragging all these guys into the build with them. But we're going to see. But the first thing I want to do is just kind of take a look at this, and I will see that um, Tom Kim does rate to be the top play, but not really all by that much. Um, if I were hand building, I'd probably eat a little bit of the projection here and save a little bit of the ownership. Now, it's not even that you're saving that much. You're going from 16% down to 11% or so. So I guess all four of these guys rates to be very similar in that 7,500 range, even relative to their ownership. So you can almost, you know, dart throw at these four and probably have a good play. Um, Patrick Cantlay is a, a, probably the strongest play overall. And the reason for that is this. I don't know. This is for people that really have been watching these videos quite a bit. But when you, if you'll recall the way I would analyze the NBA, I would sort two ways. I would sort by sheets value score and I would sort by, sort by points per dollar. And what I would be looking for are, are high point per dollar plays that are also high salary, okay? Because usually point per dollar um, rankings favors the, the cheap guys. And, and likewise, I would try to look for high sheets value score guys that were low in salary because sheets value score tends to to lean towards the high price guys. So that's usually what I like to do in golf, especially for these low cut, low cut events is try to find 
um, guys with a high sheets value score that are low price or guys that are high, uh, 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 high, uh, high value, like high points per dollar and also higher price. And you'll see that Patrick Cantlay is, is probably a really good option because like, for example, we'll, we'll rate these by, for example, by sheets value score. And he is like the only guy that's expensive. That's really up in this range here. Okay. So he, for me, rates to be probably the guy I'm going to get into most lineups. Um, and then when you go down a little bit, then you're going to get Morikawa and then Ra. So for the high price guys, it's going to be Cantlay, Rom. Yeah, Cantlay and Rom would be the, the high price guys. Oh, uh, and and Morikawa. So Morikawa, Rom, and Cantlay. Um, what I'd like to do first is just for fun, I just want to see if I can just hand build a lineup just like just by rating them by sheets value score and going straight down. All right, I'll show you. It's actually kind of kind of interesting, not interesting. It's kind of cool when you can do it. So let's just see like one way you could do it without even building is just scrolling down and seeing what in Excel to see if the top six make 50,000. It's actually pretty close. If you just played the top six sheets value score guys, you'd have 49,000. Um, and it wouldn't actually be the worst idea in the world because you're, first of all, you're getting that middling build. And, uh, <laughs> um, and also you're leaving a thousand on the table. Now, uh, I don't know if I have it in me to leave a thousand on the table. So what I probably want to do is go down to the next guy, go to Sam Burns and replace one of these 7,500 guys, right? Um, so like, for example, you play Cantlay, um, Kim. Cantlay, Kim. I wanted to play Burns, right? And then let's just say Henley. And this is without even talking about the golfers, right? Henley, Connors, and uh, I mean, you can play any of these guys. You can play Wyndham Clark, for example. Just basically getting guys that are in the top 10 on my ratings, like all in one lineup. And you can do that in golf, like really, really easily. Okay. Um, and as far as hand building, that's really what I recommend, you know, on a slate like this. I, I really wouldn't go down and pay up for this for like John Rom or pay up even for, you know, uh, or for Xander Shoffley. I, mean, I really wouldn't do it. I would try to stay in the middle, take my shot with Cantlay, and then shuffle these guys around and just kind of see what happens. Um, I would do that for 20 lineups as well, if you want to know the truth. Um, now, on the other hand, let's take a look at, um, at Saberson and see what kind of builds we would get if you went to Saberson. And if we did that, and we still got middling builds, I'd be very confident. So let's just see what we do. All right, so let's upload the projections. Build 150 just for the hell of it. Let's see what we get here. And I do think that golf is one of the more data and projected and projectable model-driven sports. And yet when it comes down to it, people just, just love these narratives. Like this guy's motivated, this guy's this, this guy's got history here. I mean, come on. So if I did it this way. Yeah, this is what I want. Like my highest owned guy over 10K would be Xander at exactly 10K and only 18%. Rama would be under 15%. So all these all of these dudes I'd be significantly under, which is kind of what I like. So, you know, I, I hate to make this kind of a short video, but 
that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm going to be playing these. Um, and listen, we have to update update the projections and update the ownership. Um, and that's going to be done later. I'm going to rerun all this stuff. But as far as process goes, I mean, I can make it more difficult. Um, but as far as golf goes, this is just as simple as it can be. Now, again, there's a lot of work that goes into getting these projections right. But once that work is done and it gets aggregated and then it gets weighted and then you factor in ownership, then putting together lineups is easy. Um, now, does that mean you're going to win? Not necessarily, but very simple sport as long as I'm concerned to actually play. So that's what I'm doing for this week. And uh, good luck, everybody.